Welcome to the live preaching message. We will travel together. My Bible and I. Let's try it again. I have a wonderful treasure. I, I have, have a wonderful treasure. The gift of God without measure. We will travel together. My Bible and I. I have a wonderful treasure. The, the gift of God without measure. We will travel together, my Bible and I. Lift up your Bible, say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I believe what it says. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught from this Bible. And I will be blessed. Say amen. amen. Wonderful. You may be seated in the presence of God. How's everybody doing? All right. It's good to see everybody. Want to, want to appreciate the film stars also one more time. Today is their first ministration. All right. It's not a performance. It's not like something they are doing for applause. It's, it's a ministration. The administration is something that is done with a message. And the message of that short sketch that we just saw was that don't do anything without the influence of the Holy Spirit. Am I right? Yeah, so if you see the guy, he was into a Cindy girl. And the, maybe the older Christian was trying to explain to him that you can't make a major decision without sourcing the help of the Holy Spirit as a counselor, as somebody who advises you. Do you get it? And they organized a meeting for him with the pastor, what we call intimate counseling. We call it intimate counseling because it's private. Do you get it? You can talk freely. Your issue will not be discussed anywhere else apart from in that meeting. Do you get it? And from there, that's how come by the leading of the Holy Spirit, he realized that he was getting into a relationship with a thief. If you are having a relationship with a thief, may God reveal it to you. Amen. Not just a, an intimate relationship, but any type of relationship. Because a thief is a thief. Thieves and liars go together. Do you get the same WhatsApp group? Do you get maybe you are doing business and you are doing business with a thief? You are not safe. Do you get it? So through the Holy Spirit, it was revealed that the girl she's been stealing. Maybe she started with pencils, pens, lipstick, makeup. Now she has graduated into laptops. Do you see? And apart from that, also a lot of things about her are not real. Do you get it? And you saw what happened at the end. One moment she was a girl, another moment she had become a boy. Do you get it? Uh -huh. So that's, that's the message. And my prayer is that you got the message. So each scene that we show you is just a short sketch, but it always has a message. Amen. Amen. Ask your neighbor, did you get the message? Uh -huh. It will be on your, on your WhatsApp soon. Don't worry. Hallelujah. Well, it's also my chance to share with you the word of God for some 40 or so minutes. My prayer is that God's word will bring transformation into your life. Amen. Amen. How many of you have come here to be transformed by the word of God? We always want to get better at what we are doing. Whatever we are doing, we want to get better. God also wants you to get better. God wants you to improve. God wants you to do well. So as God's word comes into your life and into your heart, what it brings is transformation or improvement. Amen. Amen. As you are going to school and you are being taught, your life is being improved. Value is being added to your life. 
Also, as you are receiving God's word, value is being added to your life. Amen. 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 And last Sunday, I started to share with you a series I have titled Total Prosperity. Amen. Amen. And we looked at God's plan for us. Jeremiah 29, 11, God tells us that I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. So as you are around, God's plan about you is to give you a future to bring you to an expected, an expected end is where, be where you are supposed to be when you are supposed to be there. Amen. Amen. This morning, I'm supposed to be here preaching at this time. By the grace of God, I am here. So I am at that expected end or a destination. May you marry when you are supposed to marry. May you have children when you are supposed to have children. May you buy a car when you are supposed to have a car. May you not be walking when you are supposed to have a car. Hey! You know, recently somebody told me, give me a lift to the taxi rank. So as we were going, I told the person, you better show me the way. The person was, I said, Sissy, in your world, you move with taxis. In my world, I don't move with taxis. Don't blame me for not knowing the taxi rank. I mean, no, think about it. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not pride. Think about it seriously. When you start driving your car and you are driving and you move to a new city, you are more likely not to know where the taxi rank is. Because what do you go and do there? Is it a museum? What do you go and do there? When you are supposed to be driving, may you be driving. When you are supposed to be living in your own house, may you live in your own house. All these things are possible if you follow God's plan for your life. And God said, I wish above all things that you prosper and live in good health, even as your soul prospers. So I told you that God's plan for our lives is that we ourselves will prosper, our souls will prosper, which means you will do well as a Christian. And then your health will also prosper. And I said it's a frustration when you have money, but your health is failing. You know, one of the most, um, one of the paradoxes is that when you prosper, you have the necessary money to, and you, you, have, you have prospered, and you have the right health to enjoy it. Hallelujah. And, and mind you, eating is not the only way of enjoying wealth. Okay, unfortunately for people of color, when we talk about enjoying something, we only think of what goes into our mouth. Unfortunately. May you graduate from that lower level. Amen. Hallelujah. So, God wants us to prosper in totality. And last week, we looked at a guy in the Bible whose name was Job. Bible says there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, one that feared God and hated evil. To him were born seven sons and three daughters, and his substance also were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 cattle, 3,000 camel, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a great household, such that this man was the greatest of all the men in the east. So the Bible, we looked at this guy, he was blessed totally. He feared God, had a good Christian life, had a good family life. I mean, to have seven sons and three daughters, you must be strong. No, you must be strong. So his health was good, and also he was prosperous. May that be your story. Amen. I said, may that be your story. Amen. One day when we are giving an account of your life, may we talk about you this way. Amen. Yeah, there was a girl in Deban. Whose name was Abigail. Abigail. She feared God and she hated evil. To her were born three sons and two daughters. Her substance also was one house in Amazintoti. 
One flat at South Beach. Two businesses in Durban. And a great household. A great household means that so many people depended on. Yeah. They may not. I, I have people who depend on me. They don't live in my house. In my house, I have three tenants. My wife and my two sons. But so many people depend on me for survival as well. But they don't live in my house. So, hey, pastor is prophesying that people will come and live in my house. No, 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 please. That was the olden days. Hallelujah. Now, Job explains to us how he became prosperous. And we read from Job 29. It's a long chapter. We can't read it today. We have just woken up. Okay? But he said that, he said in verse 4 that, as it was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. So Job showed us how he became prosperous. And he said, it happened as a result of me being exposed to the secret of the Lord at a very tender age. And I mentioned that to prosper, you need a secret. Coca-Cola is doing well because they know something you don't know. Let me, let me, I'm glad to announce to you that Google is not the first search engine to have ever existed. Did you, did you even know about Wikipedia? Now, if you, anything, you just go and ask Google. There are two people who know everything in this world. Google and my wife. That's all. <laughs> Only two people. My children ask me, and I say, ask your mother. No, and I'm not joking. I mean, when it comes to school things, she seems to know everything. So I say, oh, as soon as they ask me a question, I'll ask your mother. That's all. Good girl. They know something you don't know. Mark Zagerbeck, the founder of which one? Facebook, knows something we don't know. He even knows something about business that many people don't know. One of the main competitors of Facebook was going to be like WhatsApp. So he bought into WhatsApp to make sure that WhatsApp and Facebook can run line in line instead of run as competitors. Yeah, because see, Facebook has introduced WhatsApp as a status, all this. A time would have come, WhatsApp would be operating in such a way that you don't need to be on Facebook. But it's like to kill competition. Just bought it. Hey. I'm telling you. People, people know things. So. May God show you a secret. Amen. And through that secret, and I'm glad because he said, I got to know this secret when I was young. Because when you are old before you get to know a secret, you don't have time enough to practice the secret for the secret to work for you. Because some secrets take time to work. You are 63.4 and some coins years old. You have now learned the secret that, look, learning to read and write or to even just speak English is good for you. You are now getting to know it. When are you going to start learning to read and write and finish and then master it and use it? So I'm glad many of you are young, if not all of you. I don't see any old I mean, if you are old, identify yourself. You are all young. Do you get it? So it's a good time to know a secret. So today I want to share with you one of the secrets that bring prosperity. Hallelujah. One of the secrets. How many of you are planning to prosper? Now, when, let me clearly talk to you about prosperity before you get the wrong message. Prosperity is not having 99 shoes. Okay. It's not having all types of hair. Natural hair, Brazilian hair, um, Peruvian hair, which one again? Mongolian hair, and Wakanda is no hair. Afro, any, no. Prosperity is not having all the nice clothes in the world. Do you get it? Yeah. At least, just basic. 
Prosperity is not having a car. You are driving a very nice car which you have born, bought on a bond. Look, I watched a video of a guy driving, I think a Lamborghini or something. Either a Lamborghini or a Ferrari and he was in traffic. And as he was in traffic, he was just revving the engine. Vroom, 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 vroom. And the car caught fire and it bent. Yeah, as he was, I mean, the amount of horsepower in the car. And he was revving it on, with all our speed cameras here. What are you going to do with such a car? Because you drive a little, not there's a speed camera. You, you can't even enjoy the car. Broom, 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 the car caught fire. So if all your prosperity has gone into a car, you are finished. You are, you, are, you are seeing your prosperity burn right before your eyes. Hallelujah. Look, one of the desires you should have and one of the goals you should have is to own a house. I'm teaching you how to own a house. That 10 years from now, we'll be sitting here, you, you own your house. Yeah, you own your house. To own a house, at least a house on a bond, one of them's house is more likely to be repossessed. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm talking about a house that belongs to you. I finished paying. Yeah, you should. I mean, sometimes you are driving a car. You pay for two and a half years. You see, you can't continue. Just sweat. Don't argue with me until you see a pregnant fish which is not sweating. Then you start an argument. Yeah. Look, one day a friend of mine was under so much pressure. He said, hey, man underwater still sweating. <laughs> it's like, how can you sweat when you are underwater? But it's like, I'm underwater, but I'm still sweating. Yeah. Oh, pressure. So you can't sleep. When, man, when your salary enters your account, as soon as it enters, and your phone beeps, beep, beep. Beep, beep, that it has come in. Then you hear like a ringtone. Beep, 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 Everybody has taken their money from you. Look, if, you're, if you have an account with Cap, your, your salary goes to Capitec and you are not a student, it's more likely you owe. I say it again. If your income goes to Capitec Bank and you are not a student, Capitec Bank is one of the big, they have the biggest following in South Africa right now as we talk. Yeah, they have more following than FNB, Standard Bank. Yeah. I mean, they have more clients. Yes. But these other banks also have more money. They are dealing with more money. Do you know why? The charges are lower and then most people are trying to avoid the salary has come in and then other people are taking. So they've given Faustini the standard bank account. They've given uh, everybody the standard bank. So they are expecting that the money will be there but then the money goes to Capitec so that you can have access to some of Because if it lands at standard bank now, bam! The debt collector will take all of it. May that not be your story. Hallelujah. So, desire you have a house. You desire also to have, by the time you are 40, you should have a, an income that comes in without you working. I'm trying to just give you a small definition of an income. You don't work. Whether you go to work or you don't go to work, when the month ends, that income comes in. Hey, pastor, how? That's for a later day, not for now. But at least, if we work, you don't work, that income comes in. Look, you, your salary is designed such that it finishes early enough for you to be motivated to continue working. That's why you can see one person has worked at a company 20 years. If the salary was enough to take care of you forever, you wouldn't go to work. Because you don't love going to work as much as you make it look. Sometimes even you have to do a makeup that is smiling. You know, a smile makeup. But in your heart, you are not smiling as you are going to work. Say amen. amen. Say an amen to encourage me, brother. Amen. So, 
we are talking about prosperity that endures. And today I'm introducing you to the secret of tithing. The secret of the tithe. 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 The secret of the tithe. I like the way the church is quiet. I can feel that I'm in church. The secret of the tithe. Now, this is God's basic prosperity system. Basic. Basic. I mean, if you can't get this one right, let's not even talk about any other type of prosperity. Basic. Tithe. Tithe. Some of you know about it. Some of you don't know about it. But we are talking about it. And today I want to say a few things about the tithe. Then we'll continue from there. But my prayer is that you will grab this secret and you will run with it. Number one, the word tithe means a tenth. A tenth or ten percent. It's from the Greek word, I think, dakete or dakete, which is d-dekete, d-e-k-a-t-e, which means a tenth of something or ten percent of something. That's what the word means, tithe. So anytime you see someone say, your tithe, the person means 10% of what you have. That's all the It's not talking about 10 rands. I've been to places where people, when you say tithe, they give you 10 rands. The person earns 10,000 rands. So we are taking, I pay my tithe. I give my 10 rands. So some people, you go, old people, they, are all, they all give 10 rands. 10 rands, 10. It's not a tithe. It's a free will donation you have just given to the church. God is interested in 10% of what you have. Another name for the tithe is what we call the first fruit. The first fruit. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruit of your increase. Verse 10 it says, so shall your barns be filled with plenty and your storehouse break forth with new wine. So another word for tithe is First fruits. So anytime you look in the Bible, you see the word first fruits. The Bible is talking about your tithes. 10% of anything you get. 10%. So you go to work, you are paid 100 rands. What's your tithe? What's 10% of 100 rands? Eta, you look very nice. What's your name? What's your name? Kuban Gamalako. Sitle. 10% of 200 rands is how much? 20 rands. G. 10% of 500 rands is how much? Which is 500 divided by 10 is how much? 50 rands. Oh, be bold. No answer is a wrong answer. If it's wrong, we'll correct it. That's all. So, anytime you get any money, God is expecting you to bring the tithe of it to his house. The tithe of it to his house. 10% of it to his house. That's what God is expecting from us. Many Christians don't. Next week, I'm going to talk to you about why. Today, I'm introducing to you what it is. So today we are talking about what. Next week we we'll talk about why. Then we'll go to how. Go to where. Then we'll go to when. Any of the questions you have in mind, we'll answer them once you are around for it to be answered. Yeah. 10% of it. 10%. Your mother gives you pocket money. Ten, I've, been, I've been in the church, like I told you last week, since 1996. I've been paying my tithe from 1996. To today. 10%. Initially, in Nigeria, I didn't understand what it meant. So when they give us the envelopes for tithe, I just look in my wallet and any money I see, I take it, I put it in the envelope. Then so as the Asha is giving me the envelope, I have my tithe ready. I just take it, I put it, so where's the basket? I put it in. Then later, 
I was taught what the tithe was. Then I realized that what I was given was not my tithe. And then I went on to my tithe. 10%. Learn it now. Because as we are around, and, and it's my prayer that all of us who are around will be around together for a long time, five years, ten years. That is what will make a difference between us. You come ten years, you see, ah, when we look at the pictures when we were here, and then ten years, you look the same. No improvement, same hairstyle, it doesn't get better. You are not looking glorious, you are just looking pale as you were when you were a student. Meanwhile, your neighbor has married, is looking glorious. Their cars are packed outside, shimmering cars. You mean, I mean, imagine such a heat. And now you are now going to pick a taxi to go home. And your neighbor who shares the grace with you, that says, oh, God loves you, and so do I. And then she walks into her air-conditioned car. Even she's in the church, oh, then she'll press something on her phone. Then her car will start. Then the air-conditioner will go on. So by the time she finishes talking, the car, it is, you know sometimes when the car parks in the sun, you get in, it's hot. You don't know whether you should turn on the AC because it's already blowing heat. Then after some time, it could. So because she knows that, she knows that in about 15 minutes, I'll be gone. So she just takes out her French press, then I can zoom, then the AC starts. When she finishes talking to you, you know, join a bus center, be a good Christian, okay? God loves you, so do I. Then she walks into her car. Then you continue to the taxi rank. This is what will make the difference. Number three, I'm talking about, about seven things, then we close. Number three, the tithe belongs to God. The tithe is God's property. Leviticus 27, 30, the Bible says, and all the tithe of the land, be it the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, it, it belongs to the Lord and it is holy. It says the tithe, it belongs to the Lord. Yes, you are the one who went to work at McDonald's and got your salary. You are the one who went to work at Transnet and got your salary. You are the one who went to work at wherever you went to. You are the one your mother gave the money to. But 10% of what has been given to you, it's not even a gift that you are giving to God. It's something that belongs to God. Let me explain it to you. Those of you who work that you get your pay slip, you will see that on your pay slip, there's a portion that is taxed which is taken out of your salary. How many of you have had the boldness or the guts to go to SARS and tell SARS that you are robbing me, you have taken my money? No, no, never. We all just accept that this money belongs to SARS. We are even afraid when we are not paying our tax. Yeah, you can be taken to jail easily. And tax issues... It's not even the amount. Oh, no, 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 no. You can see somebody, he has chopped tax 200,000 rands. And you have chopped tax 20 rands. And you are all in jail. So, oh, but 20 I can pay. Say, so, oh, no, no. You should have paid when you were supposed to pay. Hallelujah. It, it is God's property. So, anytime we get anything and we don't pay, we are actually stealing from God. This type of message is when you preach in the church, they don't say amen. So when I was coming, I played songs in the car that to make up for your, 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 the absence of your amen. Yeah. It is God's property. It's not your property. So let, when I look, if you ask me, how much do you earn? I take out the part that belongs to God before I tell you what I earn. So if I earn 1,000, if you ask how much do I say 900? I don't even do my budget with the, with the 100 as part of my budget. So, and I'll pay God this. And now, you, 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 are, you are even proud. Yeah, to say you are paying God. You are paying who? You are fortunate you woke up this morning. You are paying who? God. Oh, please. So, it, be, it is God's property. 
It's God's property. Number four. I said I'm going to serve. I'm almost done. It is also holy. It says all the tithe of the land, the seed of the land, the fruit of the tree. It is the Lord's and it is holy. It is holy. What is, when we say something is holy, what do we mean? When we say something is holy, it means that thing is separated unto God. Yeah, so when we say this girl is a holy girl, what we simply mean is that. What, what's your name again? Catherine. Yeah. Catherine is separated unto God. Catherine is special for God. That's all it means. So something is holy. It means separated for God. So the tithe of all your income, yeah, let's say for calculation, let's just use a thousand rands. So out of your thousand rands, a hundred rands is separated unto God and it is holy. You don't use it and say, okay, God, I'll reply. I'll give you another one later. Say amen. amen. Shake your neighbor and say, it's morning, it's morning. Shake your neighbor. Don't be afraid of your neighbor. Shake your neighbor. Yeah, once your neighbor came to say, you see, listen, listen, listen. Put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder like this and shake your neighbor. Don't be afraid. Once your neighbor came to sit by you, hey, if your neighbor says, what are you doing? Tell your neighbor, I'm doing something. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Look, do it again. Let me see. I didn't see some of you. Shake your neighbor. Who's shaking this neighbor? Shake this neighbor. Don't be afraid. If the wig falls off, we'll buy another one. Say amen. The tithe is holy unto God. And it's something we must accept. Now, when you take something that is holy, it's reserved for God. You see, like in some houses, there are things that are reserved for the father. There are things that are reserved for the mother. So you can use anything in there. Like me, when I visit people, even when I enter your house, I'll check out the layout of your house before I even sit down. I tell you, your living room, the way you have set up, I'll check it out. Because I don't want to sit where you, the head of the house, you sit. Yeah, even sometimes they'll be offering it. I say, oh, no, I, I'm okay here. So how do you know? Check which seat faces the TV directly. Yeah. Yeah. Or sometimes you see all the chairs are like this. This particular one is different. Sometimes there are red scatter cushions. Then there's one. There's only one white scatter cushion in that one. Then you two come. Then you go and sit on it. You see, the whole week you have constipation. <laughs> yeah. So there are things which are separated. So sometimes, so, so you see that because maybe this particular glass is separated for a special use, just only your father uses it. You go and use it, you get a bit. I don't know if you have been in a situation like that before. Yeah, you will tell the truth also on Sunday, it's fine. Or are you were not beaten? You were just warned. Okay, good. Many of us are taking that thing that has been reserved to God and we are eating it. You have taken the holy thing and you are going to buy KFC with it. And the KFC is lying in your stomach. And you are wondering why you can't have children. Ah, let's be serious, guys. You have taken it and you have gone to buy shoes with it. So as you are walking, you are walking on your tithe. You are walking on your tithe. And then you have come to church with it on Sunday. And you are dancing, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Eh? It's the sound of breakthrough. Then you are going with home. Then you see the heel has cracked. And you are wondering why God has come to collect his tithe. Anybody who uses something that is holy, it becomes a curse unto them. That's why this is, this is the curse that leads to poverty. And it's some, I'll talk to you about it later on. But it's something you must actively and aggressively 
avoid. It's a holy thing. Sometimes you see people, they are just going in circles. 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 I had a meeting with somebody sometime this week. And I was checking what the person had done 2018. Nothing. What do I mean that the person is doing her project? Her, her project. The problem we were with October 2017, we are at the same place. One year has passed. I wonder why is some of us are moving just in circles. You are just about to finish uh, something, something engineering. Then there's an issue. There's a strike. Then you fail a paper. Then there's no sponsorship. Then there's no this. You go and sit at home. Then you come again. It's like circles. Circles. May you stop moving around in circles. May you start going forward only. Yeah. Let's not take the holy thing and Choose it for ourselves. Separate it for God. Separate it for God. How many have I given? Number one is what? It is 10%. Number two is what? First fruit. Number three is what? It belongs to God. Number four is what? It's what? Number five. Number five. That is how we take care of the church. We take care of the church with a tie. That's how we look after our pastors. That's how we look after our church. We pay rent. All the things that we do. We use the tithe. In Numbers 18, God is giving the children of Israel lands. The 12 tribes of Israel. He's giving them lands and what to do. And he apportioned lands to everybody. Apart from the tribe we call the tribe of Levi. And he has said, as for this tribe of Levi, I've chosen them to be priests, to be pastors in the church. So God said, you know these people? I won't give them any land. They don't have any inheritance. Their inheritance will be the tithe that the 11 tribes bring. So God says, when you pay your tithe, then we will take care of the Levites. Then we will take care of the Levites. In our church, the way we pay our pastors who work for the church is through the tithe you pay. When you give your tithe, then we, we, pay, we, we, we give the pastor something to buy toothbrush, something to buy hair cream, something to buy a pair of pants to wear, something to eat. So if you don't pay tithe, basically what you are saying is that your pastor shouldn't brush his teeth when he is coming to church. So therefore my question is, do you pay tithe? Wow, the church is very quiet. Do, do, do you, do you, it's a good sign. It means you are listening to what I'm saying. Because if you are not listening, you'll be talking by now. Yeah. It's like, Abby, what you are saying is that your pastor, when he's coming to church, he should come naked. Because he can't afford to buy a shirt. So he's just come, he's wearing a boxer shorts and some torn singlet. And he has come, he can't even buy a shaving stick to shave his armpit. So his armpit is bushy like a crazy man. But that's, that's the message many of us are, you are giving us. I said that's the message many of you are giving us. Oh yeah! Oh. Uh, what, what's your name? Pillar. 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 Would you want your pastor to be broke, hungry, begging at KFC, eating people's leftover? But that's what, that's what they, are, they, are, they are saying. It's very sad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, pastor, don't eat. Become a thief. Start stealing from other people. You don't need to say it like that. You just need to decide, I won't pay my tithe. That's what you have. That's, that's it. That's also what we used to pay the rent for. Look, our running cost for this church is about 20000 
every month. I said our running cost for this, this church you see here, you are surprised. You think the hostel people, they love us and they, because of love. Or they see us and we speak in tongues. They say, don't pay rent. No. Our rent and other, other small expenditure for just this place. Almost 20000 and we pay this morning. I've paid bills at dawn around four here. I was paying bills. Hey, pay this person, pay this person, pay this. I'm like wow. But that's that's actually it. And the church in Marysburg cannot take care of this church forever. This church must be able to generate its own income and take care of itself. And sustain itself. Because what do you do for the church in Marysburg? What do we do for the church in Marysburg? Nothing. Nothing. So why should they be responsible for us? Why won't we be responsible for ourselves? So it's through the tithe. So many Christians behave like people who go out, you eat at a restaurant, when it's time to pay the bill, you say you are going to the bathroom and you disappear. Yeah, many of us behave like that. Many of us behave like that. Young Christians, old Christians alike. But if this is the church you are in, the earlier you learn this principle and support God's work, the better. The better. Number six, my time is almost up. There are different types of tithes. We can't talk about it today. There are seven different types of tithes. We can't go into them one, 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 one today. Seven different types. And number seven, which is the final one. Pastor, what happens when somebody chops their tithe? Put the next verse, 31 of this one. When somebody doesn't pay their tithe and they have eaten their tithe. What happens? Let's, let's all read it. 31, please. Next verse. Please read it. I want you to read it. She says, if for any reason you chop your tithe, you must pay it back with interest. That's why you should just pay your tithe faithfully because God's, and look at God's interest rate. A fifth. A fifth. A fifth. So you are supposed to pay 100 rands, you don't pay it. When you are coming to pay, you have to pay 100 rands plus 50 rands. Hey! You don't want to chop your tithe. But guys, all in all, this is the secret we have been practicing for years. And through that, God has prospered us over the years. Yeah, I've been, like I told you, from 1996 till today. And, I mean, you wish you had my life. Let me be honest with you. No, you will wish. You will wish. Oh, let's be serious. Look. <laughs> you will wish you had my life. I'm telling you. Yeah, and sometimes not everything we say because of, for security reasons, you can't just be saying so. Because so. church members also have a way. As soon as they know something small, no, every day they see you, they're asking you for money. Look, I don't have any money to give to anybody. Let me put this disclaimer now. For those of you looking at, watching me on YouTube, listening on podcasts and here in the church, I don't have any money to give to anybody. Yeah, you wish you had my life. Yeah, when you are happy, you go to McDonald's. I don't eat McDonald's. Yeah. One day, somebody, let me tell you this story and we close. One day, we came to church. After a long week of working, one, one sister, she told her, I'm going to take you guys out. So we all prepared our mouths ready to be taken out. We decided not to eat. Because, you know, we are being taken out. So after everything, we started to drive back to Marysburg. 
Yeah, we started to drive. I live in Marysburg. You live here. You can't even come. You can't even afford transport to come. I live in Marysburg. I come all the time. I've never asked you for fuel before. Yeah, I live there. It's not like I visit there. That's where I sleep every night. My wife will not even allow me to sleep in there. But so we are doing church tomorrow, so I'm sleeping. My wife will not allow me to uh, come and sleep in your own bed. And even me, I, I think there's something about my own bed which I prefer to any other. I have to bath in my bathroom. Hey, please, let's go for it. So back to the story. What, what was I saying? So on our way back to Marysburg, we're all waiting. Hmm. When hmm, we're waiting for the person to say something, you know, when somebody has promised you something and the time to deliver has come and they are not moving, so we're dropping hints, talking about food. There's still nothing. Oh, all kinds of things. So at a point, we decided to be bold. One of us decided to be bold, and the person said. But you said you were taking us for lunch. Too. <laughs> and then we were told, oh, okay, let's go. So we said, where are we going? He said, oh, go straight. Okay, so we maintain straight. Then they said, 10 here. I said, ah, where? Here. So we turned there. Fortunately, where we were turning, there were other options. So it's like, uh, well, you never know. There's still hope. When were they pointed at the big M? <laughs> hey, that's the most popular sign in the world, the M of McDonald's. Yeah, so they took us to McDonald's. So, ah! so we said, okay, no, you know, a beggar, they are giving you something, you don't go and be proud. So I said, okay, we, we just kept quiet, let's go. When we got there, we were told in advance where we are taking you. You cannot order anything you like. We can't have Mac Fist. You can't have a Big Mac. You can't have this. So I said, what are we going to have? They said there's a special called jalapeno. Jalapeno what? Jalapeno chicken. And all of us must have jalapeno. I think, I don't know, it was going for 14 rounds or something to <laughs> It's like everybody by force, whether you like jalapeno or not, we must have jalapeno. So I said to myself, I have backed the wrong horse. So we went to this place and they, they did the order. When they did the order, I talked to myself, look, I can't have this jalapeno, whatever it is called. So I decided that let me order something else. So I ordered Chicken nuggets. That's the only thing I eat from McDonald's. Chicken nuggets. Then, just as you are quiet, the place became quiet. So then I took out my bank card and I swiped for everybody. Let's go. Let's stop the argument. Let's just stop this argument and let's go away. God is bringing you to a place. You will choose what you want to. You will not be forced to just have jalapeno all the time. I mean, jalapeno in the morning, jalapeno in the afternoon, jalapeno in the evening. Why? It's a prison. But learn this principle from now. As you practice this principle or this secret of success, you are building up gradually to a prosperous life. I pray that God will give you the grace to follow his word and to give yourself. Paul, Paul, Paul wrote some instructions to Timothy. And after he gave him all the instructions, he told him, meditate on these things, which means think about it. Give yourself completely to it. After that, your profiting will appear unto all. I'm telling you, just as Paul told Timothy, meditate on what you have heard. Give yourself fully to it. It's just a matter of time. Your profiting will appear unto all men. Stand to your feet, let's share a word of prayer. Yeah. You will profit and it will appear unto all men. Yeah. Learn it now that you are young. The secret of tithing. The secret of tithe. Pay my tithe. No matter how hard up I am, I pay my tithe. It's just a matter of time. Your profit. Even when you start, it looks like you are losing something. 
And that's why obey your commandments. That prosperity, even the cycle of poverty that runs through their families will come to an end in their time. In the name of Jesus. That they will never be referred to as poor anymore. As they change the generations that are coming after them. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus mighty name. And everybody said amen. amen. Say a louder amen. amen. Say your loudest amen. amen. Wonderful. Well I, every eye closed. Every head bow. You are here today. You know that. Tithing is not the only problem that you have. You know that if you are to die today, you will not go to heaven. But I want to say, Pastor, please pray with me. I want to go to heaven when I die. I'm ready and willing to pray with you. So with every eye closed and every head bowed, you want to say, Pastor, I don't want to go to where hell when I die. Lift up your right hand quietly and I'll pray with you. Pastor, please pray with me. I don't want to go to hell when I die. Lift up your right hand. I'll pray with you. Lift up your right If you are lifting your hand, lift it high above your head. I want to pray with you. Pastor, please pray with me. I don't want to go to hell when I die. Please pray with me. Lift up your right hand. I'll pray with you. God can see your hand. Lift it up. I'll pray with you. Lift it. If you are lifting it, lift it high above your head, please. Lift it up. Be serious with what you are doing. High above your head. And I'll pray with you. I'll pray. If you lifted up your hand, come to me in the front. I'll pray with you. Lifted up your hand, come to me. I'll pray with you. Come, come to me. You lifted up your hand, come to me. I'll pray with you. Show that you are serious with it. Come, I'll pray with you. My sister, come. I'll pray with you. My brother in the checkered shirt, come. I'll pray with you. Come. And your friend standing next to you, come. I'll pray with you. You lifted up your hand, come. Don't be shy. Come, I'll pray with you. This is the best decision you are making. Come. Encourage the lady next to you. Let her come. I'll pray with her. Can make your decision public. It's a good decision. So it's good to make it public. It's good to make it public. It's, a, it's the best decision you have made. So make it public. Make it real. Make it public. Make it real. Make it public. Make it real. Make it real. Don't be shy of your neighbor. Don't be shy of your friends. Hey, I'm afraid what they will say. I'm afraid they're already saying what they are saying, whether you come forward or not. So make it real. Hallelujah. If you are in front, pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I accept that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sins. I believe with all my heart that you died for me and you rose again. I confess you as the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus. For dying to save me. Amen. Father thank you for all these wonderful people. Who are surrendering their lives to you. Thank you that we are making a mockery out of Satan. That he has lost his control over these ones. Today as they make this decision and they take this step. That your spirit is coming into their lives. To be involved in their lives. And to help them. Thank you for the washing of your blood. We give you glory. Let their lives progress. And move forward. Let them do well. In whatever they are doing. Let them find joy. Where there is sadness. Victory where they are being defeated Lord. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. amen. Wonderful. Well. Um, what's your name? What's your name? Promise. Andile. You? Butle. Lindo Kuchle. Tom Gaisa. Tom Gaisa. Okay. Viewe. Is it? Iviwe. Iviwe. Sandra. Wow. Ivan. Sam Kelo. And you? Sfiso. Wow. Please clap your hands for these wonderful, wonderful. You know something? I'm excited that you took this bold step. Do you get it? All the people behind you. Do you get it? 
I'm sure when I said come to the front, you were feeling, hey, what are they going to say? They have all come to the front like this. It's just that they came to the church before you. Do you see? So you were not here the day they came to the front. Do you get it? The day I came to the front, it was in 1996. You, you understand? Everybody comes to the front like this at one time or another. Do you get it? So if you let them intimidate you, they are standing there. It's like, hey, what would these people say? What they, they, and so we are the demons. And they are the, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. We are all sinners. And Christ has shed his precious blood for us. So I'm very happy that you, you were bold enough to come to the front. To declare your intention clear that I don't want to go to hell. So one day if we get to heaven and the angel is trying to send you to hell. You tell the angel, hey, Mr. Angel, it looks like you didn't come to church in October 2018. Today is October what? 28th October 2018. You don't remember when they said those who don't want to go to hell to come to the front and I came and the pastor led me to pray. Because of that prayer, I accepted what Jesus did for me. I am not going to any hell. Please open the door and let me enter quickly. Yeah, quickly. Hallelujah. You guys are blessed. Immediately after the service, our pastor over there will come and speak to you. All right? God loves you and so do I.